tonight is Pat Carlson. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Pat. And our judge is Jane Posillion. And put this together. Maybe you can see that screen. <laughs> so Jane received her BFA from Pratt Institute in Brooklyn in New York, practice design in New York City for a number of years. She's a studied instructional technology and multimedia at grad school at San Francisco State, which led to instructional training videos for the Army and the Navy and later various programs for the corporate world. Her images have been selected and published in Photographer's Forum, the Best of Photography 2014 and 2017, and the IPA International Photography Photography Awards 2015 and 2020. She competes in all the divisions now uh, uh, in her home club, which is Contra Costa Camera Club. And uh, in her uh, bio, talking about uh, judging philosophy, she acknowledges that judging photography is subjective and yet believes that certain universal aesthetic principles apply to all artwork. Sharing. Jane, feel free to say a few words while I get these screens set up properly. Well, you guys have seen me many times before. So, you know, I follow the N4C uh, rules and guidelines and that uh, gives us structure, but it also prevents us from doing anything we want, which other photographers have a wide open field. So I'm working within our structure. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. You guys have one of the most interesting best clubs. <laughs> and are you guys, are you losing or losing a few? We found that we have lost folks after uh, COVID. We tried a hybrid and, uh, and very few people came in person. So we do projected in Zoom and we do our prints once a month. We have multiple uh, divisions in our live print meetings. And we know that a lot of other clubs are doing all kinds of other things, so. A quick comment about the competition tonight. If you notice in certain categories, there are no basic images. Well, we've advanced uh, people from basic uh, by petition to, from basic to advance. And so now, um, we don't really, we only have one person competing at the basic level. Right, um, we don't have anybody in basic either. And, and honestly, I think the majority of clubs are part of N4, that are part of N4C are in the same situation. Even our new, we did get three new members so far this year, but these folks have been shooting photography on their own for years and there's no way they're gonna we're going to squeeze them into basic. We're going to judge each image at the appropriate level. So we're all moving towards masters. <laughs> Nobody's yeah, in the exactly. lower <laughs> categories. One, one big masters category. Yeah. Shall I start? Okay. Yeah. Let's okay. let's start. Okay. <laughs> Monochrome Thursday, May eleventh, twenty twenty three. Intermediate. Five images. Oops. Time fades. Well, uh, I found this very intriguing and appealing. Yes, it's busy, but it's very artful. Um, it, it's got that sepia feeling that uh, gives an old tiny feeling and uh, the time piece element is also very old looking and combining the two is, is quite unique and I think it works very well in monochrome. I like the fact that the edges are a little less defined and, and kind of faded out white and I don't have any suggestions to improve it. Next. The Mighty Oak. Okay. This is just the opposite of the other one in that obviously we see a, a, a huge tree with very interesting structure in silhouette. Um, 
I'm glad there's a nice sky. You guys know in monochrome and pictorial, you can do whatever you want in terms of uh, processing and post-processing. You can swap out the sky and replace it. But this looks to me like the sky that is in this shot and taken as is. Really nice light on the grass. That, and it kind of slopes down from the left to the right. And that I find visually appealing. So it's very dynamic and has a lot of punch. Um, I like the aspect ratio. I think that works well. And again, uh, no hot spots, uh, you know, darks, some light medium grays. I think, uh, I think it works well as it is. Next. Unseen, unseen. Okay. Uh, um, I think what I works think really work well in this one is uh, coming in tight on this person. It's, it's capturing a moment that seems very personal to, and really draws me in in an emotional way. Um, I think the square aspect ratio really helps to focus in on that. Um, it's got some good ranges of grades, no hot spots. Um, not a lot of black. I think my personal taste is towards a touch more contrast, but I think that's more of my personal taste uh, in general. And that's the only thing I can think of to try and see if you like it better that with a little more contrast and gamma or as is, but very emotional response I have. Thank you. Fear and curiosity. Okay, uh, interesting title for, uh, and I think that the monochrome works well in that the, it would be busier uh, and more distracting if it were a color image. To me, the main things in this image are the faces of these horses and they're very interesting. Um, I'm not sure which one's fear and which one's curious because I can't read enough into their faces to tell the difference. But uh, um, again, uh, I think the only thing suggestion I would have is to try a little more contrast or a little more gamma to, to see if the horses uh, had a little, the bodies had a little more punch. You may like it, you may not. Uh, it's just a different variation. Next. Alice, in her comfort zone. Okay, what I'm enjoying uh, most about this is that, well, first of all, Alice is a black and white cat. I think it really is a black and white cat as opposed to a, a colored cat in terms of grays or calico or whatever. Um, and her, her eyes are just, very uh, impressive and they draw you right in. It's very sharp, um, all the whiskers and, and uh, her eyebrows. Um, but I find most appealing besides the fact that the cat is the main subject is how the fabric is folded around her to kind of frame her in. Uh, so I think that works well. And there's nice varying gray tones in the fabric, as well as the diagonal lines. She's very static, but the diagonal lines in the fabric really create uh, kind of motion. So uh, I th again, I think this works well and I don't have any suggestions. Next. Monochrome, Thursday, May 11th, 2023, advanced. Eight images. Geometry of shadows. Okay. Um, well, this is very appealing to me because of um, all the different patterns of light and lines. As you can see, lots of verticals and then the diagonals uh, on the sh bottom of the shadows uh, really add uh, a dyna dynamic element to the image. And it's nice that there's something at the end of this long corridor. There's a, there's a, an element. It's probably a, a, a column and the top of a column that you see. Uh, so it's not just blank when we get there. So that's useful. Um, I can see a lot of texture in the floor. It looks like might have been travertine or something like that. Um, the starkness between the, the 
lights and the darks, I think really help to, to draw you in. And uh, I, again, uh, I wouldn't change anything. It, it has a lot of impact uh, uh, for me, the viewer. Next. Shadows of the past. Okay, well, um, obviously an old building, a vast old building, uh, maybe Mare Island, I don't know. But very interesting uh, structure. Uh, looks like metal or steel elements, um, kind of grid. It, it's almost like a picture within a picture within a picture because you have these lovely shadows and patches of light on the ground. And then you look at, the, at least I do, I look at the steel structure and then past the steel structure, you see the windows. So there's all kinds of interest here. It's a little busy, but I don't find that detrimental. I, I think that works well for this image. Do I miss something in the space? Well, you could have a central element or focal point in the space, a person, a cat, or whatever, but I don't miss it at all. I think it works well the way it is. Next. Wise old tortoise. Well, this is a really interesting image to me. Um, I'm not sure I would have thought to put it in black and white, but I think uh, Monochrome really emphasizes the structure and age of this animal and the texture. I mean, look at the texture. Uh, I think if it were in color, it would have a whole different feeling. In monochrome, for me, it makes me look, look I feel like it's not an animal of this time. It's like almost a dinosaur because there's so much structure and age in this. Uh, I, I'm enjoying the way the maker has darkened and blurred out the background so that basically the face and uh, I guess that's a lake that the face is against are the main structures. So uh, again, I don't have any suggestions for change in, in this image. Next. Rhino. Okay. Uh, this is in some ways similar to the previous one um, in that it's all about the texture and the light uh, on the uh, on the animal. Um, he's, I like the fact that he's coming right at you. It, it, that for me, it gives the image more impact rather than he, if the animal were look, you're looking at the animal from the side or from a different angle. So that, that has a lot of impact for me. And um, when you're looking straight at an animal, uh, you know, there's depth of field can be an issue, but this is done very well. The, the uh, horn and the ears and skin of the body, everything is really sharp and that's what it needs to be. And the maker has chosen to darken and blur out background, which really makes this rhino pop out coming at you. So again, I have no suggestions uh, for change. Um, I think this works. Next. Build in fog. Okay. Um, well, uh, a familiar object, the Golden Gate, it's often veiled in fog, as you know. Um, it's very subtle. And it's a little hard for me to see where the fog is, which is at the base of the bridge and where the sky and uh, the background are. Um, I, I, I wonder if, you, if the maker had tried uh, darkening the background or doing something different in the background um, and then doing something to make the fog show up a little more. Um, whether that would help. Because there's a lot of white around this image. And to me, the, the title and the image itself talks about the bridge and the fog, which is a little subtle and a little small. Maybe crop in a little more. Okay, next. Western Vista from Helen, Helen Putnam Park, Petaluma, California. Okay. 
Well, it's very inviting image in terms of, of the composition and the angles of view. I, you know, the pathway uh, leads me right into the image down through the hills um, and the uh, Depth of field is very good. Everything is sharp. The railing that's closest to us and then all the way through all the rows of hills are quite sharp. And uh, there's enough sky. And luckily there's some great clouds and nice tones in the sky. So I think it's a very pleasing uh, pastoral image. Uh, I'm enjoying the format. It's not exactly square but it doesn't have to be. And I think this works well as is. Would something on the path make it more interesting? Maybe, maybe not. Um, you know, uh, I don't know whether there were, the maker had an opportunity to take any images of this with someone on the path and compare. That would be something that you might have tried. But maybe um, this one gives me more of a sense of loneliness inviting but yet loneliness okay next awake to the view from the ms origo svalbard 2019. Okay, this looks very cold uh it may be alaska maybe another place but it sure looks like it's a mountain with lots of snow um I think it's very, the choice of monochrome really brings out the forms and textures of the mountain as well as what the water is doing. I also find the reflection appealing of the mountain, but even more so, this line in the water of, of, of its uh, midway goes to a little piece of ice and then it continues on to the um, upper right side where you see more and more ripples and leads you to another mountain. I find that extra interest. If that weren't there, it would just be, oh, it's a mountain and it's cold. But with those little extra elements, I find it really holds my interest. So uh, no bright spots, no burnt out. Um, not The sky is kind of blank, but the darkening it to a sort of a medium gray really helps. Next. Northern California commercial fishing. Whoa, well this is got a lot to look at. Um, you know, clearly we have two boats and it, I'm wondering if there's, this is kind of like overlays or something, composites, because we have all those uh, I don't know if it's lobster pots or whatever fishing gear, but it's on top of the boats or underneath the boats, not sure which. Um, it does say fishing. For my personal taste, it, there's a, a little bit too much going on and I don't know whether the composites of the two elements, the boats and, and the other uh, elements, whether it works real well for me. I think I would have liked to simplify it and just look at the boats themselves. But this is certainly uh, valid in this category. And if this were in color, it would be way crazy to look at. So the monochrome does simplify it. Next. Monochrome masters five images. Radiating light. Okay, well, a uh, very graphic image um, and dynamic because of uh, the way the verticals on this building are just shooting up towards the sky. Um, the, as you can see, the lower half is a little dark and the top of the building is quite bright, but not so bright to be burnt out. And uh, I thought about if you make her dodge the darker part of the building, but I really don't mind the fact that it's dark. So I kind of like it as is. I think the choice of the dark sky uh, was a good one because it really emphasizes the top of the building. And there's just 
a lot to look at with all the different uh, crisscrosses and lumps in this structure. It, it's, uh, it, it's a very interesting piece of architecture and representation, artistic representation of this architecture. I wouldn't change anything. Next. Let's ride. Well, I'm enjoying the title on this because it really, it matches what I'm seeing and it adds an element of fun and camaraderie. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a nice picture uh, of the Golden Gate um, the maker has gotten down kind of low, so it's a different angle of view, uh, which I find appealing. It, it, it brings me in, um, makes me part of the scene. Um, I'm glad there are two writers there. I feel like I could walk up to them and say hi. Um, and of course, the dynamic uh, elements are the railings, which just bring you right into and through the Golden Gate. Good sky, uh, no hot spots anywhere. Uh, there are some blacks, uh, a bit of a variety of medium grays, which I think work well. And uh, this probably would also be a fun picture in color, but I, I think monochrome really works well as also. Thank you. The spring melt, once a creek, now a river. Okay. Um, well, I'm. It's a little busy for my taste. I think uh, I'm looking for a focal point, and if I had to pick one, it's the wave in the center because everything else seems to be kind of flowing along with little fringed water at the tops. But there's a nice wave in the center which I can look at. Um, I think it was a good choice to darken the rocks in the background because this story is all about the creek, um, which is no longer a creek. Uh, it's now a river because of all the water. And I think this uh, was a good attempt at, at uh, showing um, water and water motion. Looks like the maker has chosen um, a fast shutter speed as opposed to the soft, the longer shutter speeds where you can get that silky water look. And either one are totally valid. Uh, suggestions? Uh, I don't know. I tried different croppings maybe. Um, the maker has chosen more of a panoramic view to, to get the feeling of water flowing and moving. Um, but I like that wave in the middle. I, I would try cropping a little off the left side and see how that felt. Anyway, just a suggestion. Next. Climbing the old oak. Hey, um, well, <clears throat> well, even though uh, there's this tree, the title luckily gives me a clue to look at more than just the old oak and and it's kind of like finding where's Waldo. Um, you can see how nicely the tree is uh, surrounding the person that's up on the tree and the first time I looked at this I didn't even notice there was another person down on the ground because for me uh, the one in the tree is the main element. Um, the sky is not too bright. Uh, I guess for variations, I would try um, dodging the, the person in the tree and see if that gave a different feel to, to the overall image. Um, I don't mind that the tree is dark. And, I, and uh, the other thing I might try is removing the person on the bottom of the tree. And the only reason I say that is because the tree and the girl in the tree are, uh, to me, the main focus. So, but I do see that the person on the grass is looking up at the person in the tree. So there is a relationship and I, uh, and I can see why maybe the maker left that in. So just some variations that you might try. Next. Yes, Dean, during a CrossFit, competition. Okay. What struck me about this image, besides the sense of motion 
Not that he's, I know he's moving because of what's going on in his body position. There's, there's no motion blur in this image. But what I really am enjoying is the way the light is falling on his body on the left side. Um, I find the, the light on his arm and his leg and on the side of his face very appealing. And um, the look on his face looks like he's really involved in what he's doing. Uh, there is a piece of metal structure in the far right. It doesn't bother me. I think if I wanted to try a variation, I'd try um, taking that out, uh, maybe uh, content aware or cloning or whatever. But again, I don't think it bothers me because it looks like he's uh, it might be part of this sort of uh, gymnastic or L, uh, industrial area that he's working out. In. I also like uh, and feel that the aspect ratio on this image works well with the main subject. Good tones throughout. Next. Nature, intermediate, two images. American kestrels, falco, Falco sparvarius, when nesting, the male with lizard performs the hunting while the female tends to her eggs. She usually leaves the nest to receive her share. Okay, you guys are too good in nature. <laughs> <laughs> this makes it really hard. This is a, a, a great image and a great story. Um, it's all captured in one frame, which is... Um, hard to do because in nature and journalism, we tend to get carried away with the sequences and we, we have to watch it, that we don't throw in some just favorite images rather than building on the story. But this is a, a very wonderful story, wonderfully captured, uh, um, everything sharp, um, typical behavior, great title. Next. <laughs> The de this, this desert blister beetle, Lida Magister, was found in the Anza Borrego Desert. When threatened, the beetle may pop a vessel, issuing a yellow toxic fluid that can indeed cause skin to blister. Okay, again, another wonderful and in informative title. Um, we don't see any uh, yellow... Uh, uh, toxic fluid, but I wonder how long you'd have to be with this bug to see that happen, probably way too long. But <laughs> this is um, a wonderful image of this, of this beetle. I mean, very, very sharp, nice close up. Um, you, you can see him in his typical um, uh, behavior, or not behavior, but uh, environment, because he's on these flowers, these prickly flowers. Um, so, and that adds um, both this one and the previous image, although I'm judging them from as a nature story, they both have very strong pictorial qualities. So tack sharp, really nice. Um, good capture, next. Nature advanced, seven images. Pandemonium breaks out as cake buffalo run to escape hunting lions unseen. Masai Mara, Kenya. Okay, another wonderful nature image and good story. Uh, title uh, matches exactly what I'm seeing. Uh, I don't see the lion, but that it, you know they're running from something, some predator, and the title mentions lions unseen, so it's very complete. Um, the uh, depth of field is spot on. Everybody's sharp. Uh, lots of detail on all these animals. The background is nicely blurred out. Those are pictorial elements, but, um, but definitely this is a good capture of a story that you, you have to go to Africa to see. Next. Baby Elephant Seal, Drake's Beach, Point Reyes, California. Okay. 
Well, the title, as you can see, tells me that it's an a elephant, baby elephant seal. Um, I don't know whether it's a male or female. Uh, I don't know whether you can tell right now, maybe it's too little, but it looks kind of like a female because as you guys know, these the male elephant seals get really long noses. Um, so that would be something to add to the title, you know, if you knew the gender, if it's, whether it's male or female. Um, and uh, what he's doing with his um, fin or whatever, um, is he scratching? There's That looks to me like some kind of a typical behavior that you might want to mention in your title, and you know, scratching my belly or whatever, uh, scratching his belly. Her bill. Um, also, maybe something we know it's on uh, in Drake's Bay, but um, these guys, as you know, uh, they live a lot in the water, and then they come and spend a lot of time lounging around on sand. So, I I think the image is well done. The title could be enhanced a bit to tell more of a nature story. Next, marbled orb weaver. Aranus marmoris is sometimes also called the pumpkin spider from the resemblance of the female's inflated abdomen to an orange pumpkin. Well, a wonderful image uh, and close up of, of this spider. Everything's pack sharp uh, and you got the web and great colors. And the story of this. Um, Spider is really focusing in the title and the image on the color, and that comes through. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, this is a typical behavior. He's uh, he or she is sitting in, in the, their web. I don't know how long you'd have to wait to see if they captured and ate something, which would be another typical behavior. So this is more of a, a portrait, but still um, a good story. Next. An adult bald eagle feeds her young eaglet a small piece of fish. At this stage, eaglets will gain between a half pound and a pound per week. Well, oh, another wonderful image, um, of another great story told in the title. Um, let's see, feeds her young. So uh, that is a... Um, a female uh, bald eagle um, and a great capture of, of the chick um, and the fact that there's food passing from the adult to the uh, chick and the chick's tongue is out there as well. I mean, the detail is just amazing. Um, so it has a lot of pictorial qualities as well, just like all the others in this category did. Um, and I've learned, uh, you know, about the size and the weight of, of uh, the chick from the title. So well done. Next, ladybugs and aphids on a rose. The common ladybug is a natural solution to aphids, a sap-sucking bug which is particularly fond of roses. A ladybug will eat about fifty aphids a day. Okay. Uh, um, again, uh, uh, a very good title an impressive image, uh, not only telling the nature story, but also having a lot of pictorial qualities, very pleasant to look at. Pretty close on the bugs. Uh, you can, can't see what they're eating, but they're probably eating as the uh, natural solution to aphids. They must be eating aphids on that rosebud. Um, so again, works very well in nature. Next. Young jaguars. A jaguar, mother in the Pantal wetlands of Mato Grosso, Brazil, stays with her cubs for up to three years to prepare them for adulthood. Young jaguars are excellent swimmers and rely on the rivers for much of their prey. Young cubs learn to swim by following their mother across the river. Young jaguars, cubs, 
often engage in playful skirmishes that prepare them for real disputes over mate or territory. The cubs will soon rely on these skills as next generation adults. Well, um, a beautiful sequence um, and beautiful images uh, of uh, nature wise and tutorial wise. Um, in the Pantanal of Brazil, that's their, as, as the title tells you, that's kind of their typical um, area where they live. And they're not easy to find unless they're, because I've been to that area. I never got to see any. <laughs> so great capture. Um, I think each of the images tell a little something more visually as well as with the titles. So this one is clearly about them learning to swim. There's the baby and the mama. And then the next one clearly is about um, how they interact with one another, play and have little territory skirmishes. So I think all of these images in this sequence uh, expand the story and are useful to be in the sequence. Next. The female blue dasher, Pocky Diplex longipennis, usually perches on vegetation and contributes to pest control by consuming hundreds of smaller insects each day. Females approach water only to mate. Okay. <clears throat> uh, a nice, a very nice capture of this uh, blue dasher. Um, these are, they move, but they also light. So if you catch them when they're still, um, the makers caught it in a side view, which is good because sometimes it's hard to get the wings sharp uh, at a different angle, but everything here is really sharp um, and uh, very appealing. I think the title, has given us the best story you could have with this image. Um, and the only thing more the maker could have done is wait and see if it caught something and you catch them eating, but you know, that doesn't happen all the time. So uh, well done, next. Nature, masters, three images. Mother and ba baby elephant approach what is left of a dead elephant. The tusks were removed from the carcass by rangers to thwart poachers after the elephant died of natural causes. Samburu, Kenya. Okay, um, <clears throat> quite a story here uh, to having the, the mom and the baby and then right in your face, this dead, I guess, I don't know whether it's decapitated or it certainly has its horns removed or tusks removed. Um, a, a story that you would not see very often. Maybe the baby and, and the mom, but not in conjunction with um, an, a dead elephant. Um, and what I find appealing are these little, these birds. I wonder if they're scavengers all lined up. Maybe they were in that. That could have been added to the story if they, they were scavengers, you mentioned that, but um, I find them visually appealing as well. So uh, an interesting story um, and well told and, and well seen. Next. Blue-footed booby courtship. The male shows off his blue feet to prospective mates with a high stepping strut known as sky pointing. The bluer the feet, the more attractive he is as a mate. Blue-footed booby courtship. If she continues to show interest, the male booby, Sula Nabuxi, extends his wings, raises his head, and lets out a long, hollow sounding call. <laughs> Once receptive, the female stands stationary while the male attempts to climb and balance on her back. This can be challenging and usually takes several attempts. Once the position is achieved, the male process is over in seconds. The blue-footed booby is monogamous 
and remains with its mate for life. Galapagos, EC. Okay, um, another wonderful nature series. Um, each image and each title or caption with each image tells us more information. The captions match what I see. Um, and it's not just filler images. They're all different parts of this uh, process. And uh, not only is it a fascinating um, process to watch, the mating and the courtship, but also these each of these images are beautifully rendered um, and have lots of pictorial quality to them as well. So uh, not something you would see every day. First of all, you have to go down to Galapagos. And second of all, you might have to wait around for a heck of a long time. So interesting capture. Well done. At the breeding age, white pelicans of both sexes have bright yellow skin coloration and a pronounced bump on the beak. American white pelican, Pelicanus erythrorhicos, Spring Lake, Santa Rosa, California. Okay, good title. Um, it, it points out, that obviously the typical behavior is flying, but it points out that uh, that it's um, both sexes have the skin coloration uh, and the bump when they're breeding age. So that's the main part of the story, and it's very visible in this image. Um, so again, uh, a good story told in one frame and uh, very captured, really well done. Uh, Pictorial qualities are very nice pictorial qualities. Next. Pictorial inter. Okay, Oops. we'll stop for a short break. Sorry okay. to cut in. Uh, so we've covered mono, monochrome in nature. We nature. have pictorial travel and, uh, and uh, feedback. Uh, I didn't see travel. any in feedback. Were they not loaded yet or? We haven't we haven't gone through them yet. They're oh, um, but they weren't loaded when I was looking pre pre previewing. So really, oh, well that's, that's okay. I mean, if they're there, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk yeah. about them. But I didn't. Yeah. See that's interesting. So you weren't able to see them. I didn't see them. Oh, okay. Maybe I didn't click the right button. I don't know. <laughs> Question for for nature: uh, Is it required to put in the Latin name? I thought it was, but maybe I'm got it wrong. No, it's no longer required at the N4C level, but I still do that practice because for me, I think it adds an extra piece to the story. But it all depends on how well you can tell your story in the title within 200 characters, and some. Judges have said, well, leave out the Latin name and put more information in, in, about the behavior and the environment in the title. So I try to squeeze it all in. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Okay, we're ready to go through the next three sections okay, pictorial, travel, and then critique and feedback. Okay. So pictorial intermediate Pictor five pictorial images. Pictorial intermediate five images. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> now I got to find my cursor. Here we go. Baby, India. Okay, a very short title, um, but um, the title has the same punch as the image itself. For me, you, I can see it's a, a young child, a baby. Um, I've been to India, and and there's plenty of folks that have immigrated here from India. She, she, I believe it's she, looks Indian, and of course we have the heavy clue of the the mark on on the face, on the forehead. So, but it it has a lot of impact. This image. 
such um, such big eyes, and then the reflections in her, in her eyes. Uh, I tend to personally like tight uh, shots. Somebody else, like my husband, would say, oh, you've come in too tight, but I like it, and I think it works well to emphasize this child. And everything's really sharp, except for the background, which is nicely softened and blurred out. Next. Glenn, air. Okay, well, we have an artist here, um, a, a short, sweet title. Uh, I don't know whether they're doing watercolor or acrylics or oils, but that, you know, that's not important in, in a title uh, for pictorial. Um, I like the basic color palette. Uh, it's very fortunate that the gentleman was wearing red because you can't miss him. He clearly is, your eye just goes to that red right away. Um, I think the uh, <clears throat> foreground is nicely blurred out. So the depth of field works, the blurriness of, of the um, uh, grasses in the front doesn't bother me. I, I, it's not distracting because he's so powerful and he's tack sharp. Um, again, the background of, of the water and the waves and the skies have a nice color and uh, color balances the cools with the warms of these of the uh, grasses and, and the warmth of the red uh, but it's nicely blurred out so that again he's he remains the main subject so uh, do you need um, a panoramic format well you could crop a little off the right the, the right side would that make a difference I don't know it's a variation, and I uh, I think this works as well. Next. Don't mess with the leopard queen. <laughs> really interesting title, but more so the image and the expression on this child's face. Um, yeah, you don't looks like you don't want to mess with her. She's, <laughs> and it's it's just um. Really well done. Again, tack sharp uh, where it needs to be. Um, good depth of field throughout. You know, the metal grill in front uh, of this play structure is sharp. Interesting highlight uh, on the grill part there. Uh, and then she's very sharp. All the elements in her face and her body, everything's sharp. So uh, a very a clever rendition and nice colors, kind of greens and blues. Um, good title. Next. The lookout. Okay. This one took me a minute to figure it out. It's like, okay, what's he looking at? He's looking at me. Oh, no, no. He's looking um, to make sure nobody's coming because they're doing writing, I guess, on the wall and stuff, and maybe they shouldn't be. So I found it um, a, a pleasant capture of maybe something, you know, that kids do that they shouldn't be doing, but it's not a major offense. Um, and uh, it's a, a little busier than some of the other uh, images, but again, it, it has an interesting story. I, I can't think of any variations I would do. Uh, I like, I don't mind that I don't see the rest of the bodies of these two kids. I think that, that works well. Next. The trail runner. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I'm enjoying the fact that uh, it's easy for me to get into this image from the trail and the lower left side it just draws me in. And then all the switchbacks in the trail take me all the way through to the background. Um, to the last trees and mountains and, and the sky. Um, again, very nice, fortunate that there was someone on the path, little tiny person in a, a red top, which really makes, even though it's really tiny in the frame, it really stands out because of the red. So that was very clever. Or maybe they didn't have red, maybe you changed it, which is you know, the color to make it stand out, which is totally okay in Victoria. Um, 
I, I think that cropping works well. I, I think if you cropped anything more off, you'd lose some of the story and it would be harder to get from the foreground to the background. Um, everything else seems to be well done. Um, realistic colors, they don't have to be realistic in pictorial, but these appear to be quite realistic. Next. Pictorial advanced, nine images. With wings outstretched, this great horned owl majestically lands on a perch. Okay, well, a really good capture, again, this is pictorial, um, would it, it would probably also translate to nature, um, typical behavior, flying and landing. Um, but in pictorial, um, uh, it's, there's wonderful definition throughout the bird and the uh, wings, uh, texture and detail. So that's well captured. Um, the background behind the bird is a little bright. And maybe that has to do with you know, being that it's a digital image. Sometimes when you project things, it, it's a little brighter. But um, I think the only suggestion I would have, two suggestions. Uh, try and, uh, in Photoshop, you can go into Camera Raw. There are multiple ways of doing this. What I do is Camera Raw in Photoshop, and I reduce the highlights. Um, that would take the brightness of the background out. And I think that would be helpful because this story and this image is all about the bird. Um, I would also uh, increase the contrast just a little bit because He's got so many nice, or she, and I think it's a male, um, got so many nice colors in his feathers that I, I'd like to see a, a little more uh, punch in the browns and the grays. Those are the, my only suggestions for this image. Next. Sunrise in the Maasai Mara. Okay, a very simple image. This would not work in nature as you you know, because it it's there there is no nature story visually or in the title, but as a pictorial, it has I feel lots of impact. The the silhouette works wonderfully. The the sky is just brilliant orange, as you can see, but not plain. You have some little clouds in there, which add a little interest. Um, You've got the two giraffes nicely spaced out. And then in between the giraffes, you have, I don't know, I guess that might be an antelope or something and a bird flying. Um, in this category, it doesn't matter whether that's the exact thing you captured, which would be pretty amazing, or whether you put these elements together in a composite, which would also be okay. Um, this, this comes across almost as a piece of art to me. I wouldn't change anything. Next. Lone Pond Lily. <clears throat> okay. Um, this this uh, image clearly is focusing on the, the lily. <clears throat> um, it's fairly sharp. I think um, the depth of field is is a little bit off in that the sharpness of the green lily pond that this lily is on is quite sharp. Um, the actual petals of the lily are not quite as sharp. And of course it falls off as you go back in, in, in the image, but that's fine. I think what I would have done is uh, sharpen the, the lily itself a little bit. Something's popping up on the screen. Anyway, okay. Uh, sharpen it a little bit, um, the different uh, parts of the blossom. Um, I like the fact that the, uh, I think it works, that there, there's a vignette on the corners that darkens it because what that does is focus um, on the lily itself, which is the main subject. Next. A perfect day. <clears throat> okay, um, a realistic image. Um, the colors look pretty natural. 
uh, it does look like a very pretty day. Uh, obviously, the maker it was enjoying the reflections in the water because that they they've cropped it, so all that is still there. Um, glad that there's a person in the in a boat, or yeah, I guess that's a boat, some kind of flat boat. Uh, because without something in in the water or on the land, it would be kind of boring. But that really anchors my eye where the boat and the person are. So um, what would you do differently? You could try different versions where you, if you have the pixels, you crop in tighter uh, and see if you like that. Um, I know recently I've been doing some images that have reflections and I've had hard time cropping off part or all of the reflections just because they're pixels I've gotten fond of, but uh, I've, I've managed to do that and some, some of them it works better that way. So play around with it. Uh, this, this works, it's very pleasant, but I don't know if you could get more out of it probably. Next. Still life in purple and orange. Okay. Well, um, a lovely artistic portrayal of still life, of beautiful flowers, a nice arrangement, um, an interesting background, a, a color that, that has some texture to it, and uh, but not enough to be distracting. Um, all the flowers seem to be uh, very sharp, and the color arrangement is the palette is very pleasing. The, the cools of the purples against the orangey and red flowers, and different shapes too. So there's a lot of variety of shapes. So even though it's a simple subject, uh, flowers in a vase, there's plenty to look at to enjoy. Um, and well done uh, in terms of depth of field. Even the vase, which seems to have a, a, a pleasing sort of wine color to it, has, you can see the stems in the vase as they converge. You can see different textures in the vase and the tones in the darkness. So um, again, a lot here, and uh, I think everything works well. I don't have any other suggestions. Next. Desert Sunset, India. Okay, um, a similar impression to this one as the previous one. I, mean, I, I like the fact that they're silhouettes. I think that works. Uh, I think the fact that you have a nice orangey sky works. Uh, I imagine that the sun was placed there um, and that's totally okay. Uh, in this category. Uh, if it wasn't, then it was an amazing capture as well. Um, I find that the image is kind of in thirds. The lower third is the ground, the middle third is the main subject, and the upper third is the sky. And I think I would try a variation of popping I'm not sure where I crop. I tried two variations, cropping a little off the the uh, sand and see that would change. It wouldn't be stripes and thirds. That would change the feeling. And I also try a variation of cropping a little off the, the sky and see if that, because what I'm trying to, to do is emphasize the silhouettes of the camels, the boy, and how the sun is uh, nestled in the arch of the camel. So a couple of variations I would say, suggest. Next. Night at Mammoth Rocks. Okay. <clears throat> well, I suspect that this is a composite. And if it isn't, that's, that's amazing. But if it is, that's totally okay as well. Um, for me, the rocks and the sky have equal weight in this image because uh, they're so powerful in the color palette. So my eye bounces between looking at the 
blue sky and all those stars, which are really done well because they are rounds, they're not little ellipses. So you've got the right exposure for that. And then the texture in the rocks. The rocks, um, I suppose they could be green, but um, they don't look real natural. But you know, again, that doesn't matter because this is more of an artful portrayal. It's, it, I think it's not trying to be true to nature necessarily. Um, but I do tend to ping pong between the sky and the rocks because of the uh, equal intensity of the colorations and the contrast. Next. The sheer wonderment of Land Manalagar, Iceland. Okay. Um, well, it sure does look like uh, the land of fire and ice. Um, uh, the composition of this, um, I think, works well because you've got that valley, which you can't help but have your eyes sweep from the right side of the frame all the way down the valley to the left. Maybe you go the other way too, but I, I tend to go down from the low area down to the upper left corner and along the way appreciate all the uh, shapes and shadows and uh, textures on, on the hills. I think the maker has chosen just the right amount of sky. Uh, nice, the sky has something going on. It's not totally plain. It, it looks kind of uh, stormy and yet there are some pleasant white clouds. So it's a mix going on there. Um, so I, it's, uh, I, the panoramic format obviously works really well for this subject matter and this composition. So I don't have any suggestions to change here. Next. Solitary contemplation. Okay. Well, this has, uh, I think the title and the image match well. Um, I get the, the feeling of a small solitary person, which is what we see, and then this vista of water, vast amounts of water in layers. It's it's uh, fortunate that the water has a variety of textures. Um, it's a it. I don't know whether it's a composite. I just I'm it's a little hard to understand what's going on at the top with the band. But from an art, artful point of view, I, I think that the colors are balancing nice, the blues with the orange and reds add interest. Um, the main per the, the key thing is that that person is the anchor. And I think what I would do is try some variations in a different format, try coming in a little tighter, making the person a little more prominent. That might say more about the person and may not say enough about being alone and tiny. So maybe maybe that would work. Um, okay, that's my thoughts. Next. Pictorial Masters, nine images. Sun breaks through the fog on Dutch Bill Creek. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Well, the maker has, as you can see, chosen to do a, a, a aperture and speed that allows to have some silky water flowing through this creek. And that adds an interesting element. I, I'm enjoying the contrast of that to the left side where there is no rocks in motion, just a pool with reflections in the water. Um, and that's a nice, pleasant contrast. Um, I, I think I would try some variations where I cropped off some of the right side. And uh, because this log, it does lead me into uh, the image, but it's like so prominent. Uh, and it's almost in the center of the frame. If you crop some off the right side, would that make it less prominent? I don't know. Um, but 
I, I can see why the maker has chosen. The rocks are very pleasing and we wanted to, to show both banks on, the, on this river. Um, I, I think also the top um, right side, I would to have toned that down a little bit. Um, the, the sun is coming through, but you don't see any rays per se, but uh, I tried darkening that a little bit to see if that made a difference because it is the brightest, one of the brightest parts of the overall frame. If you squint at it, your eyes tend to go to the bright spot in the trees on the right. Okay, next. Wave horses. According to Greek mythology, Poseidon created the original horses from breaking waves. Wow, I had forgotten that. <laughs> um, um, I find this image a uh, simple subject, but very artfully done in terms of what we're looking at uh, and very dynamic. Um, interesting color palette, the sort of uh, purpley blues in, in the sky and then the sort of interesting olive greens in, in the water. But the, the main uh, wave in the center is, is, you can't, that's the star of the frame. Your eyes go right there. And then you follow the curves around. It's really nice how the curves, the waves on the left side curve in. And then there's this wave in the sky area on the right sort of curving in as well from the opposite direction. So, and then all the splatters of water, drips of water in the air um, are really interesting. Uh, I, I think, I don't have any suggestions to change this image. Uh, uh, that's it, next. The Art of Kinde Wiley, the Young Museum, San Francisco. Okay. Um, well, what I'm enjoying about this image is that this young lady has very colorful top on and the palette uh, uh, and, and her jeans. And that kind of matches what I'm seeing in the artwork. So they work well together, I, I feel. Um, I, I do find the right side of the frame that has the red uh, area is probably the floor of the exhibit. I find that distracting and I would try cropping that off and just keeping, cropping all the red stuff on the right side off and just keeping it, this image framed in black uh, right there. And then I might burn the floor uh, to the right of her shoes a little bit to kind of tone that down as well. Or maybe that, that might work as a balance actually. I think I like it if you crop it off to the black and then leave the red on the floor, that kind of balances in a diagonal way the red on the artwork. Okay, next. Kissing in the Rain. <laughs> Clever title, a very well done image. Um, I, I don't know whether this was composite or not, but um, it doesn't matter. Um, the colors are very pleasing. It, it's um, not very contrasty. It's kind of subtle, and, uh, subtle palette, of, as you can see, but the, the pinky oranges of the flamingos against the sort of greens and, and blues in the background work really well, give a nice tropical feeling, nice, nice texture. You've got like raindrops or something like that throughout and how the rain is falling in the water gives more texture. Um, backgrounds nicely blurred. So, uh, and the, this is an amazing moment to capture with these two birds kissing, touching their beaks. But besides that, all the other birds are in different interesting positions. So I think the panoramic format works really well with the overall uh, 
much. Next. Storm front moving up from the southern Oregon. Okay, great clouds. You can clearly see there's a storm there. Um, nice tones of blues in, in the sky and in the Oregon water. Um, it, I think it works well that there's uh, the white on, on uh, edging the water. I don't know whether that's uh, sand or 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 what. Maybe it's salt. Um, I think if you coughed anything, I don't think that would make the image any better because you've got these random rocks in the front and then you have this one little random rock off on the far right, which is kind of like a punctuation point to stop there. So I think the overall format works well. Um, I'm not sure what the main subject is in this image. It's just a, it's a very pleasing scene. Um, my eye doesn't land at, at one particular point. It just keeps scanning the whole image. Next. A late fall morning along the Snake River in Wyoming. Okay. Uh, well, I'm the... Uh, mist or, or fog uh, really add a, a feeling to this image. Um, the barn has some texture. Clearly, the grass in the foreground has some texture, which adds to this bit. Um, the light seems kind of, uh, it's, it's not sunny and it's not cloudy. It's sort of I guess kind of bland in a way. Um, and it makes the image have a little less punch. Um, it's nice that the, they have the rows of yellow trees. Um, all right, so- The barn's still here. The barn is obviously the main subject here, but I have to say that I find the hills behind it and the mist in the hills a little more interesting. So um, I think on this particular image, I would try and get a little more texture or variation in the barn so that it stood out a little more and less like this rust colored uh, triangle. Okay, next. Focus. Okay, there we go. Um, a very interesting rendition of a great favorite. Um, it, it really isn't, isn't realistic. It's really a, a very nice piece of art, in my opinion. Um, I like the title. You can see that the bird is really focusing. Um, the background is, is clearly secondary, but has a lot of interest in terms of variation of texture uh, and shapes and colors, but very subtle. And the same with the bird. Um, you, know, you can see the feathers and his eye is sharp and his beak is sharp. Um, but again, a nice subtle variation of colors in the bird. So uh, I, I think this is very artfully done and it has a, a a lot of impact on them. Next. Flamingos, Lake Bogoria, Kenya. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that, uh, the title prompts some question in my mind. Uh, and there is no particular requirement in pictorial images in terms of title. But some people like to add the location um, and some people don't. And I, I'm i not real consistent on that. So I don't know whether it's better just to say flamingos or flamingos and where they are. Just something that I'm throwing out there. I mm -hmm. guess it depends on the individual mm -hmm. person and image. Um, okay, going back to this image, um, I'm glad that there are three 
flamingos, um, and um, that fill up. They fill up the frame. They have a nice uh, reflection. Um, you can see that there's a whole flock of flamingos in the water uh, at the top of the frame, but they're nicely blurred out. Um, the color, though, in this image seems a little off for me, and I guess that's okay if you want to be really party, but I, I find it a little hard to look at, uh, just a, maybe a little too purpley. Um, I would bring the blues down a little bit, uh, or the reds, maybe. Um, play with it. I do think the um, aspect ratio works well for the subject matter, though. Next. Radiating. Okay. Um, I personally tend to like flowers with black backgrounds um, because it really punches the colors, and I think that that's what's happening here. Um, the, the flowers, as you can see, quite well defined and very sharp. Um, and the contrast of the greens with the various pinks and purples make it an interesting subject. Um, and the black background helps pop it out. Um, is, I don't know whether the maker put a little line around it, but I see a line around the edge, which actually helps separate that from the background. Okay, next. Travel, intermediate, three images. Men ready the bamboo rafts to transport tourists along the scenic Yulong River in Yangshu, China. Okay, um, I, there's no problem in travel with making a monochrome image. Um, and I think that was probably a good choice in, in this image because there's a lot going on and um, it, it the monochrome helps me read what's going on. As you can see, uh, all kinds of activities with trucks and, and people with rafts, I guess, bamboo rafts, yes, it says in the title. And it definitely does not look like, um, it looks like Asia, you know, because of um, the hats on the people and the bamboo. Um, and then, of course, the information's in, in the title, which gives you all of that. So I, I think this, and there's writing in the wall. If I could read Chinese, I could see that there's Chinese characters up in the stone wall. So all these are really good hints. And, it, and in travel, you want to be able to show the people in their native environment. And, um, and that's what this is doing. Next. Pavilion, pavilion in Gladysar Lake, a 14th century artificial reservoir in Jaisalmer, India. Okay. Um, well, this image is a travel image, but it has a lot of pictorial qualities, obviously. The colors are lovely. Um, but beyond that, you have this pavilion, which is a shape and design that you typically don't see. Uh, in a lot of places. And it does make me feel like it's in Asia somewhere. And of course, the title gives me the specifics. I know that I'm in Jusang, India. Um, there is some people in the boat back here, but those are the only little clues. I, I think that adds to the image. Um, if there were people up front, there might be more cultural clues in terms of where they're from and where they are beyond the title that is. But um, it, it's very appealing and it does fit in travel. Next. The Ubihebi crater, Death Valley, is one of several in the region. This is the largest at 2,600 feet wide and 771 feet deep. The craters are a result of stream build, building up and exploding out of the ground. Okay. Uh, well, I, I personally have difficulty with, with seeing rocks and mountains that could be in many places, excepting when there's such unique landform 
that you have a strong sense of where they are. And this one hits that category in my mind. And then the title goes on to explain about this unique landform and how enormous it is and, um, and how it was formed. So I, I think this works well in travel. Uh, you could probably, if you, it has pictorial qualities, you could probably stick it in pictorial with a different title as well. Okay, next. Travel advanced, four images. Good morning, time for breakfast in Olgi, Western Mongolia. Okay, uh, a very appealing image. Uh, I, 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 I'm looking at this child and I'm looking at the doorknob and thinking um, I'm probably not in the United States, but, uh, and of course the title tells me exactly where I am. Um, and he, he does look Mongolian to me, uh, just from the pictures I've seen, I've never been to Mongolia, but, but, it, but definitely Asia somewhere. Um, I think this would also work, this image would also work very well in pictorial uh, because it's all, it's tight in on this little boy and, and um, he's so expressive. Um, for travel, uh, it does work, but I think if you had backed up a little bit more and maybe shown a little more of the environment uh, to get more clues as to where you are visual clues, not just in the title. That that would be my suggestion for travel. Okay, next. Rainstorm over the Grand Canyon viewed from Mather Point. Grand Canyon National Park, Arizona. Okay, well, here's another landform that I find is quite unique. Uh, and so clearly what we're looking at is the Grand Canyon and we have the information in the title about that. Um, it's a, it's a, a big swath of the canyon. As you guys know, it's, a, it's really large. And it, it, uh, it's nice that this, there is some sky uh, and something going in the sky. You've got some blue as well as some gray sky. So that really helps because as you guys know, you can't do a sky replacement if you put it in a travel category. Now, if you put it in a pictorial category and you didn't want the cloudy sky, you wanted a different sky, you could do a replacement, but not in this category. So I think it works well in this category. Next, sorry. A woman bends forward under the weight of her load of rice straw in Baruli, Nepal. The straw will be used for feeding livestock. Okay, well, Clearly, if I didn't pay attention to the title, I would know that I'm definitely not in the United States. I would know that because you don't see people carrying a big bundle of straw like that. And then the clothing on the person is, is not our typical clothing. And then all of the good information is in the title of this image. So you're seeing somebody in the native environment, you get a little bit of the native Environment, which is very rural, um, and I, I can tell that, you know, it's Asia, you know, it's where it is in Nepal, so um, I think this is a good travel image. Next. Bonneville Salt Flats, Utah. After an unusually wet winter, the salt flats had a shallow layer of salty, slushy water over large areas. Locals and tourists alike enjoyed walking on it. Okay. Um, I, I'm getting the location of this image from ma mainly from the title. Um, I am seeing some salt or what appears to be salt, especially in the foreground, but it, 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 it doesn't have enough visual clues tell me and maybe that's how salt flats look I, I i honestly don't remember i've seen them a long time ago but for me um this image 
is more about the shoes and the loneliness of the shoes on these soft flats and these tiny little people standing out in the up, upper part of the right side of the image. Um, so I think it, it's not as strong a travel image, and, but I, I'm getting a lot of emotion from it and I'm wondering whether you should put it in pictorial because it definitely has an interesting story between this location and these one pair of shoes and these three little people out there. Next. Travel Masters, three images. At the Carpet Emporium, Jaipur, India. Um, okay, well, even without the title, uh, I can recognize that I'm in a carpet uh, store. And uh, although the, the, the men in the image don't have, they have Western clothes on, they, they do look Indian to me. So, and I, I've, I've been to carpet emporiums in Jaipur, so I know that personally. But I do think this is a strong travel image because it doesn't look like here. And it's an interesting, uh, capture. He's obviously not posing for you. Um, you've got an interesting moment and, um, it, it's a, a, a fun travel story. Next. The aptly named monkey face rock formation in Smith Rock State Park, Oregon, attracts climbers from around the world for a chance to scale the uniquely shaped 350 foot tower of basalt. Wow, I didn't notice those people when I previewed, but there's some tiny little people at the neck of this. Uh, so this is really a massive rock. Um, I would say, you know, it, it um, it's probably a distinctive enough rock formation that people would, you know, it would stick out and, and could qualify as a unique spot travel-wise. Um, you don't see any people uh, close enough to get a sense of the culture or culture. Um, so I, I don't know how it'll stand up against the other ones, but uh, it can work in, in travel. Next. A French fry seller balances his wares on his head. Varanasi, India. What I'm enjoying about this one is the title tells me all the good detail and matches exactly what I'm seeing. Uh, I know, even if I didn't list, read the title, I would know that I'm not in this country because uh, people don't usually carry French fries on their heads like that <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> and he has a very interesting uh, green container that I don't know whether he puts his French fries in there or what that's about. Um, and then you have this interesting uh, structure in the background that I don't know whether it's a temple or not. And you do have some writing in the upper left-hand corner. It's probably in Hindi or, or one of the dialects. So um, I, I do think this works well. It's not a setup and they don't like in travel, uh, they don't like setup shots. And this is clearly a, a, a well thought out grab shot. Next. Critique feedback, uh, five, five images. Okay, yeah, but I didn't see them, I don't know, okay. Take your time. Okay. Antics. Antics. Uh, I like the title. It's cute. It's an ant, and the ant is doing antics. How very clever. <laughs> um, a lot of red. <laughs> but the ant reads well. I mean, he's a little black ant. Um, it, it obviously would not work well in nature because it's, it's kind of too arty. Um, it, it might work in creative. Um, I'm enjoying the shapes of the petals of this 
blossom that the ant is doing antics on and how their edges uh, swirl and turn. And, and there's, a, even though the whole thing is a blast of red, there are other uh, tones of red in there. And the shapes too, you can see the pistols and the petals. So um, I think this works well, I, you know, uh, put it in creative, creative scene, creative sheathing, creative title, <laughs> or pictorial. <laughs> Next. Stolen Treat, Angkor Wat, Cambodia. Ah, an interesting monkey. Um, and I imagine, well, I don't know, maybe they do uh, eat those kinds of fruit off on their own off the, off the trees, but probably a tourist gave them, gave them that. Uh, this would, um, could work in nature. I mean, it's a typical behavior of eating a fruit, but for nature, as you guys know, you'd have to tell me more about what kind of monkey this is and uh, whether it's male or female, or, you know, more of a story. Um, it actually works well in pictorial too, I think, because, um, and it, it's got a, a cute title for pictorial. Um, maybe just say stolen treat and leave the anger wad off for pictorial. Um, no suggestions in terms of changes. Okay, next. Reverence, Wat Sutawas, Bangkok. Oh, interesting. Um, you know, there's a, a lot of white space in the middle, but what that does for me is it makes me read the man who's praying to the uh, statue, who, I guess it's a Buddha, um, it puts the focus on those two elements. So uh, I think that makes it actually stronger. Um, I do find the golden uh, statuary behind the man distracting a little bit from the story of the man praying to the to the blue Buddha. So I don't know. Uh, this could be in um, pictorial, but I'd also try some variations of it. Um, you know, in, if you put it in pictorial, you could do layers and move the little blue Buddha closer to the man without all that space and you could cut out the gold statues. So that would be a, a whole story there. Uh, does it work in travel? Maybe, because in travel you can't, um, you can't really do that kind of manipulation with the layers and stuff. So that mm, it might. Um, anyhow, that's my thoughts on this. Next. Clearing after a storm in the Welsh settlement of Chubut province of Patagonia, Argentina. Okay. Um, well, this is a very pleasing scene for me. Um, and it looks very realistic. And I think, you know, obviously this would work in a pictorial category. Does it work in a travel category? For me, it, and I actually have been to Argentina more than once. Um, for me, though, there's nothing in here that screams Argentina, except for in the title. So I wouldn't put it in travel. I would think pictorial would be a, a good category. And I'm really enjoying the tiny little bird that's flying in the sky. Um, there's one little bird up there that kind of allows me to fly in the sky with it. Okay, next. Guanaco, Lama, Guanacico, in the Camelid family, grazing in a grassy valley in the high Andes, La Rioja province, Argentina. Okay. Yeah, this is an animal that's um, typical to this area and uh, not a lot of other areas maybe uh, 
Argentina and Chile has them too, but I don't think a lot, they live in many other South American locations. Um, <clears throat> clearly it's a, it's a behavior. So maybe this would be good in nature. I mean, the behavior is that it's eating. You get to see that it's, it's eating grass, which is, I guess, a typical food for this animal. Um, so I think perhaps nature might be the better category um, than pictorial. Pictorial, uh, I'm not sure it's a good portrait. Um, okay, next. I've covered all of the images. We'll take another five minute break. Okay. And then Steve will come back with the winners. Okay. I'm to the awards. And are you seeing monochrome intermediate? Yep. Yes. Okay. Now I got to get back to my other screen. Okay, monochrome intermediate three images, third place. Ellen. Um, thank you. This this man was was blind. And you know when it, it popped up, I I realized it I thought it had more contrast than it does. So I think your suggestion's good. Congratulations. Yes. Nice. Second show. place. Yeah. Amy. Oh. That's really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. You here? Was she here tonight or? I don't think so. No, she's not here. Okay. Congratulations to Amy. First place. Sherry. Oh. Hmm. Okay, so Sherry. I wonder if that's Crane Creek. Yeah, we saw some pretty big trees there. Congratulations to Sherry. Monochrome Advance, four images, honorable mention. Guy. <laughs> That's great. How close were you to that guy? <laughs> I don't think he's here. Uh, it would have uh, been right. Safari West. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Awesome. Congratulations to Guy. Yay. Third place, Laura. Oh, <laughs> thank you, and thank you for the uh, input on the photo. Thank you. Yeah. Beautifully composed. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's like showing Ooh. off for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. Really. Congratulations! Second place, Linda. Oh. Yeah. Mirror Island, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Congratulations to Linda. First place, Ronnie. This is really graphic and nice. Mm -hmm. There we go. She's in English. English, England. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Congratulations to Ronnie. Monochrome Masters, three images, third place. Mike. Ah, oh. cool. How'd you get that, Mike? Looks like he's, he's down low to the bridge. Yeah. Uh huh. Maybe he went to bed. Yeah, he's gone to bed. <laughs> Congratulations to Mike. Second place, Tim. Ah, uh, yeah, like. Very nice. He's the building guy. Yeah, he is. First Perfect. Republic Bank is at the base of that, so that's kind of timely. Oh, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, I do have to point out that that's one front street which my father designed. Oh, you did? Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. Who said that? Who said Ellen. that? Ellen. Ellen, cool. 
Congratulations to Tim. First place, Mike. No. Yay. <laughs> ISO 1, 12, 800. That's Wow. Yeah. yeah. Pretty, really dark. pretty dark and shady. Yeah. Yep. Not too noisy. Congratulations to Mike. That's the R5. Yeah. Nature Intermediate, two images, second place. Mark. Hi there. Um, after Jane's comments, uh, I wish I'd toyed around with it and gotten a blister to see if it really worked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would not. <love> Sequence. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I do want to say just I'm dazzled by all your photos tonight. I joined this about three years ago, and I'm I'm learning a ton from all of you. So thank you. Congratulations. First place, Greg. Oh, God, Greg. Well, this is the fourth year in a row that we've had falcons nesting in our backyard. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Great so photo. I'm, I'm really enjoying just sitting in the backyard watching their behavior. And they the best time to photograph these is later in the afternoon when the sun's getting lower. And I was able to capture this at 600 millimeters through about a, a three foot wide opening in the leaves. Mm. And they're just sitting there right in the sunlight. Uh -huh. I can't have to grab it. Oh. <laughs> that's a pretty nice branch yeah yeah <laughs> yeah we we have a lot of uh branches in our backyard that were burned in the tubs fire uh -huh. and these birds just love to sit on them they're <laughs> right, out, right out in the open and that's a great one. You know, they're very fast and they come in hot and it's it's nice to have a, a good landing strip yeah <laughs> I, I have a general question. I noticed the ISOs at 5,000. There was a comment on ISO before, so I don't see any graininess or it or whatever. So how is that overcome when you use high ISO? If anyone minds just sharing that real quick. The the Sony Alpha One has amazing resolution at high ISOs, so that's. Oh. Not I think too. A lot of the cameras now can handle at least five, six thousand or whatever. No problem. Without huh? much okay. problem with the denoise application. Yeah, I don't see any noise, did, so, you know. I did use a topaz denoise on it, too. I love topaz denoise. Yeah, <laughs> you do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I shoot auto ISO, and I am so many times at 12,800, and I don't even notice it. Oh. Uh, Is this all digital? Also? Is it, it digital, is. what we're talking about mostly? Yeah. Okay. But no passing to the Sony also? And I, I shoot Fuji. Fuji, okay. Wow, amazing. Nice job. I love it. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yep. Congratulations. Yep. Nature Advanced, five images, honorable mention. Ed. Yay. <laughs> It was such a delight watching it scratch its belly. <laughs> <laughs> I almost put that in the title, but I I just kept it to right to the point. But it it was it was a joyful image to shoot. Yeah. Is it a, is it a, a girl baby or <laughs> I haven't a clue. It was oh. from far away and I was tucked behind a log with my three hundred. So I have I no idea. Their nose, their noses don't really develop until they get older. That's true. Yeah, this was that very small. It was, it was very small. So, you know. It looks yeah. like he's saying, or she's saying, I tickle myself. Yeah, that's oh. nice. <laughs> if and, only and, we could be that happy. And, and, and Ed, so you, you asked about rules and that. So, you know, it, at getting a, an honorable mention, you can actually enter it again. You can enter something three times if it hasn't won first, second, or set or third. Oh, so, I did not know that. Yeah. Oh. Read the. <laughs> yeah, read the read, rules. 
<laughs> I got to read that thing one of these days. Uh -huh. <laughs> and those are your club rules, right? Yes, those are our club rules. Yeah. They follow N4C. Uh, but uh, well, they don't have to. Now, N4C, people enter things over in various categories. For yeah. us, even uh, if it's if it's been uh, changed, uh, it's a derivative. It can't be entered if it was first, second, or third. So no. a derivative can't be entered. Although I know at N four C, I see people entering it. And all, all. I I know, but I just read that rule again today. If it won at any level, you're not supposed to enter it. Ah, well, we we we're very careful about that. Yeah. Our club has even stricter rules, which I don't agree with, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> but an HM can be, uh, oh, what are yours? Um, they just, we just changed them this year. Um, anything that won at any level, you can't put in again. And anything that you put in um, and didn't win, you can only put in one more time. And if, it, if you, uh, we have prints and digital, so um, it, if you put it in twice in digital and didn't win, you can't make it reappear in prints and try it in prints. Uh, we allow three, so we're one one more than you. Yeah. Well, also derivative, uh, yeah. derivative ones, like uh, if Similar. it was changed, yeah. changed into uh, a creative something or cropped yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Or, yeah. Can you re-edit? Yeah, you, you can yeah. edit, but but you can only enter not you can't re. If this had won first, say you couldn't do it in mono and enter it again, or exactly and right. do it again. But because it's a uh, honorable mention, you have two more tries for exactly this one or a derivation of it. Yeah, Perfect. and in our club, it's one more try. <laughs> and they're they're. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Thank Nicola you. said. Thank you. Congratulations. Honorable mention. Okay. Tricia. No, oh, thank nice. you. I don't even remember where I took this. I was looking for something to enter and I found it in my nature area. And I was like, <laughs> oh. it was at Foothill. Was it? Foothill, Hill, I think, in um Windsor. In Windsor. Anyway, thank you very much. Appreciate your comments. Oh, thank you. Congratulations. Third place, Ronnie. Mm -hmm. Nice. She's in England. Still. Congratulations to Ronnie. Second place, Laura. That's a great <laughs> shot. You. Great shot, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's been kind of fun to watch these little guys grow up. Um, it's a... Uh, it just, you know, you see the fierceness of eagles fighting, you know, at other times, and then you can watch the flip side of them being so gentle. And it's just, it's, mm -hmm. it's interesting to see how extreme they can be. So, thank yeah. you. Wonderful capture. Yeah. Nice Beautiful. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. First place, Stephanie. Ooh. Oh my goodness, Stephanie. Hey. Oh, thank you. Very <laughs> nice. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so who was asking me? Somebody from the club was asking, it seems like you go there a lot. And I do. <laughs> so oh. these, photos, <laughs> these photos were taken in uh, two consecutive years. It's the same Cubs. This is them grown up. And um, wow. it's been, I have to say, I mean, I think we all can appreciate how wonderful it is to get that connection with wildlife. I mean, they're just such magnificent creatures. It's yeah. And did you see these in the wild? Totally? No, these are, I only shoot things in the wild, absolutely. So yeah. this is uh, in a park uh, called Encontro das Aguas, or otherwise known as Porto Jofre, in the Pantanal. And um, they come down by the banks at a certain time of the year when the river is a little bit um, lower. Is that the Paraná River? Or? It's a it's the meeting of the Cuyaba and the San Lorenzo. Oh. And I think there's another one. It's it's about a five hour drive. Uh, I think it's south from Cuyaba down the Transpantanera Highway. Got it. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, really Thank good. you so much. Great. Question: 
Stephanie, do you mark all of these images as being genuine wildlife? I sure do. I don't know why they don't show up, though, that way. Maybe um, when they go to N4C, they have that. It's... Sometimes if if it's very full with the title, it may not show. Oh, okay. But I, I'm very, because that's um, a, a, like a kind of a pet peeve of mine is that, you know, we, uh, that we honor wildlife in its natural habitat. So it's like a big deal for me. So I always but take pictures in, in that's um, actual wildlife and genuine wildlife. And I always check the box. Good. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in the, at the end of April for the N4C Awards, um, we took both Best Authentic Wildlife Awards. Yeah, so that's, that's yes. not surprising. Your you guys' nature is just amazing. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Nature Masters, three images. Third place, Bill. Oh, thank you. Very nice. Gotta look for the bump. Yeah. Yeah, at first I thought it was some disfigurement. It turned out they all had one. <laughs> <laughs> so I looked it up and sure enough, it's it's when they're in the breeding age. Breeding. When they really get nice. Really like it, Bill. Yeah. Thanks. Congratulations. Second place. Tamara. Mm. Boy. I think she's there now. Oh. She, she lives there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Congratulations to Tamara. First place, Herb. Oh, God. Herb. Herb. This is so great. Thank you. <laughs> this Brilliant. was on a recent, recent trip to uh, the Galapagos. And it just happened. Uh, we were there. Sun was going down on the first day, I think, and uh, it, it wasn't that tough. <laughs> it just took a lot of pictures and put them in a sequence. So, thank you. And the hey, last yeah. one's my favorite. That yeah, I love the way their names <laughs> are together. For <laughs> life. Congratulations. Thank you. Pictorial Intermediate. Five images, honorable mention. Mark. Um, yeah, not much to say. This was up in Mendocino, and there were several artists out uh, doing their art up, out in the open air. So I just, yeah, I agree. The red shirt kind of caught me in his poise and so forth. Congratulations. Honorable mention. Amy. <laughs> Congratulations yeah. to Amy. Third place, Sherry. Mm -hmm. He's a hiker. Most. Congratulations to Sherry. Second place, Ellen. Mm. Thank you. This this baby just stared and stared at me. She's mm -hmm. probably never seen a a person like me before mm -hmm. and, and I'm not sure it could be a boy because I, I I I looked it up online and they do pierce the ears of the baby boys and the oh. ears yeah, it's hard to tell the hair is not long enough to tell <laughs> yeah, it, it, are you sure that they, but isn't I, this um, you'll notice is here more of a feminine uh, marking the forehead. Yeah. What I saw was both baby boys and girls had markings. And right. when I was in, in India, um, northern part, they put makeup on the boys' eyes, like black liner on the mm -hmm. yeah. we, we did see a baby. I thought it was a girl with heavily made up eyes, but maybe it was a boy. Right? Yeah, it's hard to tell. <laughs> <laughs> Dear that, baby, precious. The reflection in the right eye is so sharp. Have you tried enlarging it to see if you could make out anything? 
Oh, I think kind of. Um, yeah, this was at a stadium. There were, there were a lot of people, and, and I'm probably in there in that reflection too. Yeah, probably. and I do. I did give it a different background because it was kind of uh, blown out um, and full of people. So I put some Indian desert behind <laughs> her. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. First place, Greg. <laughs> great. Uh, so this this is our six year old granddaughter. She has a South African father, and was born in South Africa. Wow. Now they now live in California. And this year she went on her first safari back in South Africa with her parents. And when she came back, I noticed a, a bit of a change in her behavior <laughs> at the playground. And she was taking on the fantasy, in her fantasy play, she was taking on the character of wild animals. <laughs> so, I was wondering how you came up with that title. <laughs> yeah, and she, that's what she calls herself. She calls herself the Leopard Queen. And I think it's a takeoff from, or the, the, the answer to the Lion King. <laughs> Very cool. But anyway, cool. I was, beautiful I was, image. Yeah. Just beautiful. I was fortunate Great. enough to have my iPhone with me and I just snapped it and got some good symmetry and yeah. I just love the reflection on her chin yes. and the symmetry in her eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's great. Anyway, mm -hmm. thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. She's gonna go places. <laughs> <laughs> she has a she has a very outgoing um, personality and her name is Pepper. Oh, good. <laughs> Congratulations. Pictorial advance, four images, honorable mention. Jennifer. Jennifer here tonight? Uh, I'm here. Yeah. What are you I'm gorgeous, Jennifer. I'm here. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, this was uh, was not manipulated. That was just how it was captured. Oh my God! Wow. And uh, wow. I will uh, try your <laughs> suggestions about different croppings. Um, anyway, thank you very much. Okay, that was amazing that you captured that for real like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had to run around a bit to get it to. <laughs> yes. It is cool how the sun sets there. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Congratulations! Third place, Laura. Thank you. Still here, Laura? I don't see her first. Yeah, I don't see her. Congratulations to Laura. Second place, Cindy. Oh, Cindy. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. Um, I took this um, in March when I was in uh, Kenya, and I did not had the antelope or the um, bird. That was wow. what was there. Wow, that's amazing. Wow, that's amazing. And both of them. Great timing. For that. Thank you. Both really beautiful. Congratulations. First place, Ronnie. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations to Ronnie. Pictorial Masters, five images, honorable mention. Anne. Wow. Do not miss this exhibit, you guys. It's amazing. It's at the de Young. Ah. Hmm. We saw Ansel Adams and we're like, oh my gosh, this is even wilder. <laughs> yeah, Ansel Adams was great. I agree. We'll have to go back and see this one. Congratulations to end. Honorable mention, Tim. Oh, surprise. Very pretty. Hi, Tim. Congratulations to Tim. Third place, Mike. Mm. Congratulations to Mike. Second <laughs> place, Bill. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well, this was the uh, the 
field trip that we took as a club to Goat Rock. And the waves were, were pretty muddy, actually. It was, it, was, it was great light and really dramatic waves. Uh, but I, I looked up the video that the presentation that Tim Clifton did for us. It's one of the videos that we have on our website. Uh, to see how he gets all the different colors that he gets in his wave shots. And so I got a lot of help from that uh, video. I spent about two days figuring out wow. how he does it. A lot of, the colors are all changed compared to what the original yeah. image. Mm -hmm. It's really gorgeous. Yeah. Gorgeous. Thank you. And I see that horse head kind of. Good. Bottom Somebody sees the horse head. head. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> breathing fire water. <laughs> Congratulations. First place. Herb. <laughs> oh. Hello, Herb. Oh, thank you. Thank you. This is the uh, same trip to Galapagos. And uh, there's no exit there, but it's it's way out and far across the lake. And it starts raining, but the light is so great. And I have a yeah. rain cover camera. Of course, it's in the bag, and I'm out there shooting in the rain the whole time. But uh, oh, no. so this one, and I had some condensation inside the lens the next day. Uh, but uh, uh -oh. the only thing done was a little little color tweaking, and uh, and that was it. It's a dance. Wow. Cool. Nice. Well, the rain is everything. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Congratulations. Both. Travel Intermediate, three images, third place, Sherry. Mm, love that place. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to Sherry. Second place, Amy. Mm. Not here either. Congratulations to Amy. First place. Ellen. Oh, Ellen. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> um, I and about a hundred other photographers, I'm afraid, got this similar shot because we all got up at five in the morning to go catch the sunrise over the reservoir. Um, and there were fishermen out there, so I'm, I'm glad they ended up in here. Yeah. <laughs> Well, really I guess beautiful. it was worth it to get up that early. Yeah. I don't remember yeah, it was worth the it. lake. I've, I've been to Desert Giselma and I don't remember the lake. It's very close to the town. Okay. That's probably why. All right. Mm -hmm. And I think it's glad, I spelled it wrong. It's Gladysar Lake. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Travel Thank advanced. You. Three images. Third place. Pat. Oh, thank you. Yes, this is a little boy who um, loved to uh, greet us in the morning when we were on our trip in Mongolia. Wow. Beautiful child. Yeah, he was cute. Congratulations. Second place, Trisha. Ah, this is um, one day after the most amazing snowstorm. You could not see anything in the canyon the first day. And luckily we had another day, we went back the second day and it was still storming off in the distance, but not here. So thank you. Lovely view. Nice job. Congratulations. First place, Cindy. Mm. Well, thank you very much. Um, I think the title says pretty much what happened there. Yep. <laughs> Congratulations. Travel Masters, three images, third place. Herb. Oh, wow, thank you. Uh, this is exactly as it says, and it's a, a rock climbing destination. There's there's some climbers at the base of the neck, and there's some climbers actually in the mouth. Oh, yeah. Too. See that. Huh? So they, they climb up from one to the other, and it is uh, certainly a unique uh, <laughs> unique formation you can show it to any rock climber in the world and they'll know exactly where you are so thank you congratulations second place 
Bill. Yeah, thank you. So I had to fight the, the urge to change the title to something like All Carpets in India are Flight Tested before <laughs> being sold. You don't want to put that title on a travel. <laughs> I know, I know, but I sure wanted to. My I'm wife wanted me to. <laughs> But this guy was presenting the, the carpets one by one, and he, he would actually twirl them like a pizza, only they're much bigger and heavier. Amazing coordination, amazing, amazing that he could do it. And it just, it's a way of presenting the carpets. Hmm. He was having fun, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, everybody had a good time. <laughs> Congratulations. First place, Tamara. Mm -hmm. Boy, the great light. Just, mm -hmm. just yeah. I never imagined French fries, French fries going that way. Makes me hungry, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I think that green thing is what he puts the French fries on. on when he's dish, so. dishing yeah. Them up. yeah. I love the relationship of the two figures. It's almost yeah. like yeah. they're reflecting. Oh, the green and the green. Yeah. Beautifully done. Right. Yeah. A moment. Congratulations to tomorrow. And ah, here we go. For the second month in a row. <laughs> Are you <Yeah>. seeing? <laughs> hey. Herb. Congratulations, Oops. Herb. Yay. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> that was unexpected. Wow. Um, just a fortunate timing. Okay. Yeah, a, good use a lot of great nature shots. And the only reason I picked that one also great is they just don't mate when you're there. You know, it's like mm -hmm. <laughs> you really got lucky. <laughs> the whole, the whole process have... got start to end. So, uh, yeah, that was that was good timing. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yay. Right. Great night. Thank you so well, much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Jane. Thank you. Enjoy you guys. So thank you so much, Jane. Thanks, Jane. All right. See you next time. Thanks very time. much. Take care, everybody. Keep Come to the program in two weeks. Ah, bye. Bye.